Today's daf, Be'ezus Hashem, is Mesech the Baba Basra, daf Tezayin. And we will begin on daf Tezvava Medbeis. I'll make a break. Uh, Tezvava Medbeis, about like uh, nine lines from the uh, where the lines start to get wide. And basically, uh, the Gemara is discussing the, the book of Eov. Amr Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan says, Dorish al Eov, the generation of Eov, shot of Bezimahaya. There was a lot of sexual misconduct in his generation. Shinema, the Pasuk says, Hain Atem Kulcha Chazisim Belam Lizeh Hebel Habalu. Eov was trying to understand why misfortune befell him, and he, he claimed that he was a righteous person, that he never uh, used his eyes in, uh, in an inappropriate way. And he used the word chazisem. Uksiv, the Pasuk says, Shuvi Shuvi Ashulamish, Shuvi Shuvi Nechzebach, that the, in Shira Shirim, the Goyim say, come, uh, become one of us, and you can you can feast your eyes wherever you want. So we see the word chazisem, of Nechze, both refers to Znus. So it must be that the generation of Znus, of, of, of Eev, was also full of Znus. So the Gemara says, Eime B'Nevuah, Maybe uh, Chazisem refers to Nevoa, the Ksiv Chazdoin Yeshayahu ben Amot. And Kain Lamazah have a taboli, then why is he complaining? So basically, uh, 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 that's that's it. So therefore, that proves that the generation of Eev, what makes Eev a righteous, gen, a righteous person, was because he didn't go with the rest of the society uh and 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 decay like the rest of the society in, in immorality. But Rabbi Yechon, Rabbi Yechon says, My tixiv then Rabbi Yechon explains there was another generation where people were uh had misconduct. They were judging their judges. That's the beginning of Rus. Dar a generation that judged their judges. I'm a lie, if the judge will tell you, tell Kesem and Bain Shinecha, Bain Shinecha, take your uh take a toothpick out of your mouth. Basically, you know, he was trying to give you a judge was trying to give you someone tried to give you musr for doing a small abeira. I'm a lie, you would tell him, Tol Karabain and Echa. Uh, take the beam from your eyes. In other words, take the beam out of your house that you stole. Basically, you would rebuke the judge if he rebuked you. If if the judge told you your your silver has impurities in it, you will tell him that your wine is full of water. So basically, no one you couldn't rebuke anybody, and nobody took musr. So therefore, that was a very bad generation during the Shaiftim in the time of Rus. This Malka Shva was in the time of Shloim Rabbah. Queen Siba, Isha Haisiv, who was a woman, is making a mistake. Even though the Sukim there are feminine in in uh, in uh, in, uh, in Malachim, but the king it was not a queen; it was a king Shva. Anyway, now the Gemara Darshan's all about uh, 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 who Eiv was and why was he challenged. It was Rosh Hashanah, and the Satan came to meet with God. So basically, God asked uh, uh, the the Satan, "Where are you coming from?" So God, so the Satan told uh, told God that I searched the entire world, and never found anybody as a faithful slave as of Ramavinu. You never had a faithful person. You told him that you're gonna that the, the whole entire Eretz Yisrael is his, and yet when he had to bury his wife, he had to pay most of his wealth to purchase a piece of the plot, a burial plot. And despite being promised by you, he didn't think twice about it, and he didn't uh, he didn't question your judgment. So there was nobody like Avram. So Yem Hashem Al Has Satan Hasam to Libcha Lab the Eiv Ki Enkmai Ba Aretz Amra. So uh, God said to, to the Satan basically that there's somebody like better than Avram Avinu, and that's Eiv. Amra Yechanan God Lo Hanem Be Eiv Yosem Hashem Avram the Eiv of Avram Ksev Kiati Dat Kadei Mer Ma'ata Ksev Eiv Yishtam Yosher Yirei Lekem and V'Sar Meira. It is more adjectives destri- describing the righteousness of Eev more than, Av- than Avraham Avinu. So it turns out that God was seemed to be more proud of Eev than Avraham Avinu. My Vesar Meira, Amra Baba Shmua, Eev Vatram of Mainaham, Minah Goshlam, Nice and Hatsi Putu the Chemini, Eev Vitramishaloi. Eev was very 
easy going with his money. And that's what it means. He was Vesamera. In other words, if the if he owed the if he owed the his workers money, he didn't ask them to return change, but he actually let them keep keep whatever the uh, he overpaid them. So basically the Satan is going to challenge Yif to see if he's greater than Abraham Avinu. And it turns out that he was not greater than Abraham Avinu because he ended up complaining. God God challenged him too much. And uh, you got to learn Eev. The end of the story is God uh, returned everything that he took away from Eev and doubled it. But and God, the Satan complained to God, you, you think Eev is better? That's the conversation that they're having. You think Eev is better than Avram Avinu? You gave him everything. He blessed him with wealth, a nice family, and all his handiwork you blessed. Not only was Eev a blessed person, but also um, also his, if you took a money from Eev, you became blessed. So he was like a, like a, like a Rebbe. Mayu Meknei Aparetz Baaretz, and his calves breached the normality of earth. In the calf, the sheep, the cattle of Eev were, were, were overpowered, were, were stronger than wolves. In other words, the wolves, the normal way of wolves is to eat and kill goats, and the goats of Eev would kill the, the, the wolves. We're about bottom of Tesvavim of Beis, and we're going on to Zayinam at Aleph. And we're discussing Eev. The Eel Shalach Nyag Yadcha, the Gan, Chalach Leim, Loy, Apanechi, Rachaka. God challenged Eev. God challenged the Satan. He said to the Satan, Go and bring problems to Eev. Take away every, all good things that he had. And uh, see, you may be right. Maybe is he still such a righteous person? You can do anything you want, but keep him alive. They had a family party. The, the Pesach says that, it's, that, the, that the good news, he was having a nice party with his family. And, and and then a a, a messenger came to Eve and tell him that everything is doing great in your field. As soon as the cattle were plowing the earth, already on their way back, the donkeys were grazing. Then we go to he had the, he had the picture perfect life. It was a oilam haba type of life. He was so wealthy that as soon as he did something, he was very successful at it. He planted, as soon as he planted, it it already grew and his, his donkeys were grazing. Now, that was the beginning. And in one day, he lost it all. First, they told him a fire of heaven burned down your property. And, and your animals. Then they told him the Kazdum came and and they divided themselves and took and stole all your camels. I guess camels in that time was a valuable possession. Basically, they came to him and they told him, uh, your, your family was having a party, you left the party, and uh, all of a sudden a, a wind came and the building collapsed. And all your kids and daughters, they're all dead. Oh boy. So yes, you can see that all these problems were caused by the Satan to challenge Eev. And let's see how Eev responds. He lost his wealth and he lost his family all in one day. He shaved his head and he and he um, tore his clothing. And he said like this, I came into this world empty, naked. In other words, I didn't own anything. And I'm going to return naked into, into the grave because I'm not going to own anything. Basically, he's recognizing that all this was blessings that God gave him. It wasn't his. It was he, he was in charge of it. But Hashem Nason, Hashem could give. This is everybody's familiar with these words. Hashem Lokach, Hashem could take it away. Yishem Hashem let Hashem be blessed. Uh, even despite all that, Eev, Eev did not sin and he did not blasphemize God. He accepted the divine judgment on him. And so that shows he was a righteous person. 
So again, it was another Rosh Hashanah, and the Satan, God says, Satan, where are you coming from? So the Satan says, Like we said before, I'm still searching uh, who is the most uh, devoted uh, human that ever crossed planet Earth. And the Satan says, I, I found that nobody's like Avram Avinu. Because, because despite you promising, again, the entire Eretz Yisrael, uh, when he came time to bury his wife, he had to give away all his wealth. And he did not challenge your your the ways that God conducts the world. So again, But God told the, the Satan, he said, listen, uh, didn't I tell you that Eev is the most righteous person that ever lived? He's even greater than Avram Avinu. Because... I took away every blessing that Eve had, and as you convinced me to do so, and uh, God says the Satan convinced him to do something, and it was a, it was a, it was, it was a, it was a test that was for nothing, because you see, still that Eve still blesses God despite the divine judgment against him. Am Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, the Pusik seems to imply that God is saying, you see, you convinced me, you persuaded me to do something. And and uh, God is not that type of uh, of of of, of uh, something that you have, of anything that you could talk about that it can be persuaded. But the Pusik says God was persuade, persuaded by uh, by the Satan to act against Eve. But Tana, we'll skip this. Uh, That's what the... Uh, the, the the basically what the satan does is he tries to goes down to earth tries to confuse you then goes up enrages god and he gets permission to kill you we'll see more about who the satan is it's one of the same it's the yetzahara the satan and the malacham others but before that in other words, God said, okay, let's challenge him again. Uh, let's challenge Eve again. To, uh, let's give him boils. Let's get, make him sick. So, but the, that was the instruction to the Satan, to the Satan, to make Eve uh, physically sick. And this, but don't take away his life. So that's a very difficult person, difficult challenge for the Satan. How could you make somebody so deathly sick yet not take away his life? Satan had a bigger problem more than Eev. It's a slave that tells his ma the master, told the slave, break the, break the barrel, but make sure all the wine stains intact. God gave him instructions, make him very sick, but don't take away his life. He's the, he's the prosecutor. Okay, let's call the Satan the prosecutor. He's also the one inside of you that convinces that, that you know, convinces you to to uh, do uh, to do evil who malachamabas and he's the angel of death who has satan ksiv yetz satan mes nashem who yetz hara ksiv rak ra kol yom ksiv hacha rak shmoish nafshecha rak ela baltish who malachamabas ksiv ach rak bes nafshe shmoish it seems alma bidi de kama it means the same malach we are using the same expression this when we refer to the yetz hara we say rak when we refer to the satan we say rak and when we refer to the malachamabas we also say rak now, basically, the Satan uh, challenged Eev. Now, why did the Satan challenge Eev? Because God was saying that Eev is greater than Avram Avinu. So the Satan challenged Eev to show God that, no, Avram Avinu is greater than Eev. Uh, than Eev. So that was, a, uh, that was a very special thing that the Satan did. Amar Ablevi, Satan Pnim Neshem Shemayin Neskavnu. Satan and Penina, the story, the wife, the second, the second wife, uh, the co-wife of Hannah, in Tanakh, were were ha their intentions were good. Satan continued to Avram. Satan saw that God was loving Eev more than Avram, so and he's going to forget about Avram. So he decided to challenge Eev. 
So he his intentions was to for the to, for the sake of of the Jewish people. Penima the ksiv the ksasa kasasa gam kas babar ima the rosh. So the, you have to learn Tanakh, but Penima was was taunting Chana as for not having children, to force her to to pray out to God from the depths of her heart, and because of that, God punished Penina, the co-wife of Chana. But then, it, but the point was that she had good intentions because she wanted her co-wife Chana to pray. Harder, and of course, Chana is the mother of Shmuel. So, Darsha Ravacha Bayakov in Pampunya. Ravacha Bayakov made a speech, this speech in Pampunya, defending the Satan. Also, uh, Satan Nashki uh, the, the The Satan came and kissed his feet. So, it's nice to defend the Satan. Anyway, he never sinned with his lips. So Amarava Biswasov Lechata Belibe Khata. In his heart, really he did sin. My comma as Nit Biyan Rasha Pnay Shafteli Khasim Loy Aifamihu. He said that the land was he basically he said that God gave over planet Earth to evil people to run it. And God's not paying attention. That's what he thought in because they're covering the judgments. If not, where is God? Amarava B Kish Liev Lahafa Karasha Apia. Rava said that Eev wanted to, uh, you know, basically deny God's uh, omnipresent in the world. And God's not paying attention. Um, so that's what Rava said. Um, Abai said, like, Dibi Eev el No, Eev understood that, this, the, that God is running the world, but he was talking about the Satan who temporarily took over the, the world, so to speak, and was bringing evil misfortune on Eev. But uh, Eev is not that bad. That's what Abaya said. So the Gemara says, Kitanoi, did evil, did, 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 did he do the sin? Kitanoi, Eris Nitim Yad Rasha, Blazab and Oima, Bikish Eev Lapacha, Kara Pia, Omelar, Bishua, Ladibi, Elapne Satan. So actually, this Machlaikis between Araya, Abai, and Rava actually was a Machlaikis Tanoim, whether Eev was actually, you know, speaking against God or speaking against the Satan. Adat Chikiloi, Ersha, Vain Miot Hamatsa. Um, uh, uh, basically, there's another Pasek in Eev, and Eev is saying that things are destined. There's things like he had the Newtonian uh, rule in him. In other words, that you can't change what has been de what's destiny. And that that's Kvira. And it also, ba basically, he was saying that, you know, some people are righteous, some people are evil, and people are born that way. It's not something that you make a free choice. So that's what Rava said, because it's you decide who's not going to be a Rasha, and nobody can change that. You see the way the world is created. Ox have, uh, uh, have, have uh, uh, their, their hooves are cleft, uh, a donkey is not. You created the uh, Gan Eden. You created Gehenim. You created Sadikim. You created Rishonim. There is no free choice. That means that there is free choice. Even though some people are more inclined to do Averis, the Torah is an antidote to the to the Yetzirah. So no person, no matter what, uh, he's inclined to do, cannot change to become better. Doresh Rava, Rava, uh, Rava made a speech. The Pasuk describes what a nice guy Eev was. When he saw uh, uh, orphans, who had a field that nobody was working on then, he would temporarily take possession of that field, you know, build it up, and then return it to the orphans. And 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 he helped uh, widows get married, because whenever there was a widow that people didn't want to uh, want her for a second marriage, well, Ia was the most, you know, popular person on the planet. So therefore, he would say, oh, that's my relative. And that that enables certain almanas to get married based on uh, being a relationship, they, uh, being, you know, quote-unquote related to to um to Eev. So apparently Eev 
Eve uh, wanted to challenge God as if he was a friend, or he wanted to rebuke God as if the, they're on equal level. And therefore, Rav said that you could put earth in the mouth of Eve for saying such sins. Gemara is now, you know, you know, running head to head, saying how Eev thought he was greater than Avram Avinu. So what did he say? Despite there was sexual uh, misconduct and immorality in my generation, I watched my eyes, and they, 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 I never looked at even an unmarried girl. And so Rava said that's that's uh, that you could put dirt in Eov's mouth because Avram Avinu, Avram Avinu, not only did he not look at other women, he he didn't even look at his own wife because the pasuk says he uh, no yadati. When they got to Mitzrayim, he said, "Oh, now I realize you were a beautiful lady." As uh, till now he didn't know. So therefore, Avram Avinu seems to have of uh, greater merits than than Eov. The said, some people just die and will never come back. He denied that there's a resurrection of the dead. Basically, as you're going to see, Eov, this being challenged so much, started uh, you know, saying things against the Abishta and saying things against the divine providence and divine uh, uh, watchness on the watchfulness on earth. And therefore, God's going to say, okay, let Eve have it all back, get his re reward in this world, and double it, and he will not have oil and That's what, how it's going to end. Asha b'sar yishafenu v'hiba b'sar yichina. Omar Rabba, Eve b'sar acheref v'sar acheshivu. B'sar acheref. He started, d'ksiv asha b'sar yishafenu. Omar lefanav. He said, to, he, said, he said, God was hit by a tempest. In other words, by a hurricane. Rabbi nishloyim. Maybe a hurricane hit you and you got disoriented. And you, and you confused it. You meant to take uh, your anger against an enemy and you, you became, uh, you took it against me, Eov. Uh, uh, God answered him very strongly. He said, look at all the hairs on your body. Each hair grows from its own hole. So God says, I don't confuse uh, each. If two hairs come out of one hole, that would, you know, a, a person wouldn't be able to live. He would, he would darken the sight of a human being. So I don't, you know, I have it down to the last living cell uh, that's uh, to the atom. So I don't make any mistakes. So you think I'll make a mistake between Eev and Oyev? Again, I don't know what this means, but basically God answered Basically, God said to Eve, what, what do you mean? I made a mistake between Eve and Oyev? I, I Take a look at them. Every raindrop has its own, you know, form. And no two raindrops look alike, right? Because if two raindrops looked alike, they came out of the same formation and the whole world would have been flooded and it wouldn't give off fruit. So I, every raindrop is different. So I don't make mistakes between raindrops. You think I'll make a mistake between Eve and Oyev? My mashma the high tallish. First, Amar Rabbi Sheila takes the highest of the same. The word ta'ala means a form. The derech the chazus koyl harba koyl is brasi be oven. The whole koyl kol brasi lishvil be pniyatik. They shall stay koyl shayetz be shvil echad. She the molish stay koyl shayetz shvil echad. Machriven es kolayim and kulay. Ben koyl and koyl is chalafli. Ben iiv loyev is challi. God God answered iiv and said another thing. The the I made thunderclaps. Each thunderclaps has its own path to reach the ears of a human being. If two thunderclaps came on the same path. And that would destroy the world. You, you wouldn't be able to take such high-powered uh, sound. So uh, God says, uh, so, so God says, I know sound waves, you know, and every every sound wave has its own path. So that I, I never make a mistake there. You think I'll make a mistake between Eev and Oyev? We go on the Tezainam of Ace, the letters, Euler Roy Shahar, could they sheep a man of Yamus? And he must be a nation of Kabuk Nafa, Minikhe, Lefanel. Be the Molly Makte Rege 
God said to Eev, there's a, there's a wild goat that gives birth on a mountain, right? Let's say call it an ibex, whatever it is. And it's it's so cruel to its kid, I guess it doesn't want it to, it, it lives on the harshest place on planet Earth. So it wants to, as soon as it gives birth, it wants to drop the kid off the mountain. And as soon as it drops the kid off the mountain, the baby off the mountain, God makes an eagle come and then grabs this uh, calf with its wings and then brings it back to the to the to the to the wild goat and if the eagle would not, would you know delay a second or come too early it would miss the catch so god says between one split second and another split second i don't make mistakes i'm gonna make a mistake between a eve and oyev i didn't make a mistake by bringing all this on to you God says to Eev, there is an animal on earth that has a very tough birthing channel. It's called an ayolo, a very narrow birthing channel. And when it wants to give birth, God makes it that it gives birth over a snake hole, and a snake hole comes and gives her a bite there and, and, and by the womb, and that softens the 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 area and it's able to give birth so if if what happened was if the snake came out too early or come out a second later this from the birthing pains this ayala would die so god has to make it come out at the most perfect time so god makes no mistake between seconds and seconds so between an eev and an oyev would god make a mistake so Eev Lai Bedasi Dav Lai Bahaska. What do you learn from Eev? Amarava Mekan Shain Odam Nitva Spishat Sare. This is a very important point that you can't blame somebody who says something against God when they're in distress. When in distress, don't blame them. And 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 therefore that's uh the Pasik says Eev acted and said things without thinking things through. Then the Pasik says, we're gonna go another uh two minutes and then we'll stop. If you read Eov, he had three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Soifat. And they all came and they all knew that misfortune held uh, 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 Eov. And they came and they all met Eov at the same time. Now, these are great friends, but how did they know what was happening to Eov? It happened so quickly and so fast. And they didn't have, you know, cell phone communication back then. They came at the same gate. They lived 300 parsim, like 300 miles from each other, and yet they all arrived at the same time. So the Gemara asked, uh, They had like a communication, a clearly like, a, I don't know, some sort of crown that they saw, that uh, some sort of indication that they saw on their, a, a plant that they had in their house that withered or the light went off or something like that. They had a tree. They came in the country. So they had a tree that represented each other. And so that when they saw that the tree dried out, they knew something was wrong with the friends. So basically, Eev's friends were so close to him that they didn't have to hear from Eev that misfortune happened to him. They saw they saw something in their house that indicated that their friend Eev is in trouble. That's what people say. Give me life, like give me a friend like the friend of Eev, or give me death. The person always needs a close friend that you can talk to. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's just do, okay, let's stop over here. Let's stop over here. Okay, where did you? So the Gemara continues. There's a passage that says that there were at times. In Parshas Noach, where it says, uh, in Parshas Barashas, where it says that people had, uh, there was a lot of females. There was a much more of a female population. That's what Revia Balai, and the word Leroy means another name for females. Strife came to the world because there was so much uh, women that you ended up marrying two wives, more than one wives. And that brought a lot of strife and a lot of problems to people. The word Revia means increase because there's, there's more women, you can have more children. The population grew. If 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 the, he asked the question that the word Revia, if God wanted at the end of Eev bring more uh, blessing back to Eev because of uh, the challenges that Eev went through, 
So then why didn't he have double daughters? In other words, he had three daughters in the beginning of the story and he had three daughters at the end of the story. Uh, everything else doubled, all his wealth doubled. So why didn't he have double daughters? Amalehe, because basically Rishlakish said to Rabbi Yechonet, if it's a good thing to have a lot of women in the world, so why didn't Eev have much more daughters at the end of the story? Amalei, so Amalei, so Rabbi Yechonet said they did double. The, 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 the women, the girls that he had after the, mis, the misfortunes at the end of the story were much more beautiful than the double beautiful than the, the, the girls that he had in the beginning of the story. The Pasuk says, Again, we're talking about the end of Eov. So he had three daughters, Yamima, Ketzia, and Karen Hapoch. Yamima, She was so beautiful like the day. Her, 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 she had a beautiful smell, like a beautiful, uh, uh, Ketzia is Cassia, is a type of, uh, uh, spot, herb that has a beautiful, beautiful smell, a beautiful smell. She, she had, she looked like the horn of a carish. So they, they laughed in Marava. That's not a, that's not a good description. Basically, she looked like a, a certain type of flower, and uh, and therefore. Uh, the, 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 they didn't like what the what they, the Babylonians said that she, it was, she looked like a, a wild animal that had that had who has black horns. So it says like carcum that grows in a garden that grows in a garden. Okay, so, so that will stop. Uh, so we stop it over here. We'll stop over here, and we'll continue tomorrow. Have a good Shabbos.